Hi everybody, Scott here. Today we're going to drink a one of the earliest Yunnan Sourcing Productions, the 2009 Autumn Yiwu Ding Jia Jai. And this is uh, Autumn. Here's the Gu Hua characters. This is often used to, to, to denote Autumn teas in Yunnan. Uh, Ding Jia Jai. Um, so this is a large, uh, large leaf Asamica, pure Asamica tea. Um, that there. It's, that cake's about half drank, so I had a hard time keeping the wrapper around it, but I managed. Um, so Ding Jia Jai is actually north of Iwu town, um, fairly close into Iwu on the road to Mansa, uh, La Mansa, which is another great uh, area. I don't think we've ever actually produced a tea from La Mansa, but um, Ding Jia Jai is pretty close. And um, Another tea that we've produced quite a few Ding Jia Jia over the years, um, as well as uh, Yao Ding. Um, Yao Ding is a different family. Uh, Yao Ding is a Yaozu family that lives in Ding Jia Jia. About half the people that live in Ding Jia Jia are Yaozu, and the other half are. Hi, Lucy. You want to be in the video? Hi. It's hot. Hmm? Okay. Go get on your bed. Go. Hi. All right. Let's get this going here. I decided to do silver today, even though I'm doing solo, so um, might get a little bit of extra tea. That wash is pretty long, so I'm gonna give these cups a little rinse and then actually drink it. extra couple of cups actually sitting here just in case. Um, but yeah, it's hard to believe that it's been, or well, guess what, 2019, or 2009 autumn, 2000, 2010 autumn, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So yeah, Almost, you know, ten years now. This uh, this particular tea, and this this one has been aged in um, Kunming till about 2014, and then and then um, Oregon till 2016, and then Texas until now. Um, it's just been in one of these kind of boxes that I have. Um, which I selected because they really didn't have any smell at all. Um, so pretty dry stored. Mm. The wash there, let's go ahead and... This one here. I can't just set this teapot in the this chai, this chai is too big. So I've used about seven grams. There's about 7.2 grams in here, which is not a huge amount, but not a small amount either. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour these in here. And cool a little bit. But Iwu is an area that, I mean, even back in 2009 was not cheap. And I remember, um, you know, obviously, going back in time now, this tea didn't seem like it was that expensive, but compared to teas from other areas that I was getting, um, even compared to a lot of areas of Shishuan Bana, the Yibu teas um, were definitely quite pricey. And this is a Gushu, this is an old, old, uh, old tree tea, two to three hundred years old, um, Ding Jia Jai. And Autumn was good because it was, it was about, typically, about half the price. Um, of spring, or maybe about, actually no, about 40% less than spring. And I didn't make much. I think I made 30 kilos at the time, which um, was a huge investment for me at that time. And uh, it was really, um, it was kind of hard to do because it was quite pricey. But now drinking it, of course, I feel silly for not, you know, 
I probably couldn't have really bought much more of this tea because at the time that was pretty much all that they had. And I think even now they don't, you know, obviously you can't ramp up production on Gushu Cha. Well, you can if it's fake, but, um, you know, they're still not producing um, a lot of teas. But I think the price, the, the prices for the new cakes are considerably, have, you know, gone up a lot over the years. Um, just the raw material costs. Mm. It's nice. It's it's still really kind of a semi-aged shung, but with Iwu being a ten-year-old, um, with ten years old of a uh, ten years of age, just makes it really nice. It gives it a very much of an aged feel and a very pleasant, malty um, feel, but enough complexity. There's still some bitter. There's still some bitterness and astringency in there, along with that sweetness and that kind of spiciness. That it's not. You can see the. Oops! I just dripped on this old wrapper here. That's not going to help. Um, you can maybe see the the soup with a tea soup color. Not super dark, but um, definitely not a new tea either. So it's definitely on its way. I think another ten years, and it'll just be mind-bogglingly, you know, amazing. But it's also pretty amazing right now, just in terms of the taste and the feeling of it. It's very nice. It's very viscous. Um, a lot of mouth action. <laughs> Coming up with more Stephen Colbertisms. I'm gonna write on the new descriptions of the teas when I release them. Let's go in here. I'm not gonna keep track of how many steeps because I'm doing like two cups. I'm doing or a cup and a half with this teapot, so. But I'm gonna get probably pretty jazzed up. Mm. Oh yeah, this is the best steep yet. Oh wow, this is why I love Iwu teas, just because they, they turn into this. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it, um, other than just an incredibly thick, layered, complex taste that's just has a lot of, you know, a lot going on. Mm. And this is, I believe, the same steep. Mm. The other thing that's interesting about Iwa teas and that I discovered when I started making these, um, you know, Going, going to Iwu and making these Gushu teas is that Iwu teas are hardly, you know, sweet and nice. Um, unless you're talking about the plantation teas. So, so the interesting thing about Iwu and the plantation teas that are kind of in town and close in, um, those teas are often sweet and nice. And they, um, excuse me, let's get me... Go ahead and brew this here. Um, they are sweet and nice, but what I discovered when I started to drink and source the Gushu tea from Iwu is that Iwu teas, not only in terms of cha chi, but also in terms of flavor, are some of the strongest teas out there. Um, like Gudan, Ding Jia Jai is not a super bitter um, astringent one, but it definitely has it. And even 10 years in, and even being an autumn tea, this still has a good deal of bitterness. Um, so this is definitely a tea that, you know, depending on what you like, I think I think it's a tea that you could totally drink now if you drink, you know, semi-aged sheng or even young sheng or some, you know, semi semi-aged. This would be totally this would be totally fine. But it still has that bitterness and it still has that astringency, which is kind of the hallmark of a lot of you know ulu which a lot of people don't realize. People just think characterize Iwu as the way that they've experienced Iwu, which is typically plantation teas. Um, and there's nothing wrong with Iwu plantation teas. And, and they, age, they age nicely, although a, a, a bit perhaps on the, um, you know, I don't want to say boring side, but perhaps on the easier drinking side. Um, whereas these Iwu uh, old tree, you know, wild arbor type teas, um, 
they tend to be, especially the Asamika ones, there's also, you know, Ibu has a lot of um, Yedrum, which is like a mixed leaf varietal, um, like Ibang or Guden. Actually, in the case of Guden, it's incredibly bitter tea, the varietal that they have there. Um, but in Ibang and sh like a Shikong, some of these other areas that are Jom Xiao Ye Jom, the tea is actually quite, quite complex and good and strong Cha Chi, but it, in terms of bitterness and astringency, it's much less. So those teas, um, you know, I've actually seen some Ibang teas that were like Ibang, Gushu, and some of these other ones that were being marketed, or Shikong, or um, some of these ones that were being you know, where they just basically pressed like plantation teas and called it that, called them Ibang Gushu or something like that because they were easy going. But Ibang, although not being super bitter and astringent, is very strong tea and very, very complex. So, and Ding Jia Jai is, but of course Ding Jia Jai is, as I said, pure Samica, so it's, it's kind of a different animal. Mmm. So good, so good. Oily. It's got the cooling too, it's nice. Um, gosh, this is, this is gonna be, keep these steeps a little bit shorter to try to, to try to moderate the, um, the hit, as it were, from the from the tea. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna have to pour out a little bit. I hate to waste it, but I have more teas to drink today. When you look at the green leaf. Um, it doesn't really look like an old age tea. Um, this is kind of a hallmark of dry storage where the leaf will change. Um, the output of the leaf will change, but if you look at the leaf, there's not a huge change. If you look at the dry leaf, you'll notice that it's definitely much darker, a little less green. Um, this one may be a little bit, but with these gushu, with a dark, dark olive green color being its natural original color, um, at 10 years, it's a little bit darker, but it's not dramatically so. What you'll notice is, the again, the dry leaf and then the tea soup um, is what's where you see the age more. And of course the taste and the feeling. Oh yeah, so nice. Very sweet. The bitterness and astringency has faded quite a, has faded a little bit, but it's still really active. Like, you know, I talk about this quite a bit, which is what you're tasting in the mouth, you know, is from, could be from a couple of steeps before. Liu Gan, as I say, the, the, the long, the lasting taste in the mouth. Um, again, a hallmark of, a, of powerful teas with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, What's the right word? In Chinese, they would say nei han, a lot of kind of internal, you know, stuff in it, tannins and all the other stuff and coming out compared to, you know, like a plantation tea or young plantation teas, which, you know, just deliver something and then quit real fast. Drink this. Just... That's that sounds deep. Um, but yeah, Ding Jia Jai, definitely one of my favorites. Um, when we first produced it, then we produced, um, 2009 autumn, this one, 2010 autumn as well, I believe, 2000, and then for it, then it was, it was a few years before we produced, uh, produced another one. Um, I forget which year. It's not as constant of a um, Iwu village as some of the other ones. Um, but as I mentioned before, um, Yao Ding, which we also have produced, is from the same, is from the same village.
but the villagers, those villagers who, who are Yaozhou people, Yao people, um, refer to their village as Yao Ding, uh, which would, Yao is like um, the character for Yaozhou, the Yao minor, uh, people, and Ding says this Ding. So, yeah, it's a very small village, so, you know, if People are allowed to call it like whatever they want, I guess. And I think it's also a language thing too, because you have um, Han people, and you have Yao people, and the, the, the Yao people have their own language, um, whereas the Han people would just speak Yunnan dialect, probably, and of course Mandarin. And of course the Yao people living there speak Yunnan dialect as well, but addition, they additionally have their own um, Yao language, so. Yunnan is very much, um, very much a polyglot, many, many different languages. Not only different, distinct different languages from the different um, tribes, I'll call them, or different, uh, you know, people, but also um, di local dialects, which are variations of, variations based on Mandarin, um, and can vary from village to village. Um, my 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 wife's or my mom or my wife's mom grew up. My mother in law, um, they have slightly different pronunciations for some words um, compared to the village um, where where my father in law grew up, which are about ten kilometers apart, and um, they're always kind of like poking fun at each other because of their slightly different accents, even though they're only from villages ten kilometers apart. It just kind of makes you wonder if. They don't intentionally just kind of, you know, do that to, <laughs> to distinguish themselves as being from that particular village. Um, but I'm not a linguist, so, or an anthropologist. But um, oh, this is going to be a strong tea. It kind of went off there. That's what happens when I drink these really strong teas. I get, oh, I'm getting, start getting chills. But I drink these really strong teas and, you know, my mind kind of wanders a little bit. Just go to four. All right. Nice, real gold orange tea soup here. one of those teas that we're not going to be able to drink through um, through the whole video simply because it's too um, it's going to last too long and at two cups each I don't think I can do want to do 12 steeps right now so I probably after the steep um, we'll kind of call it quits but um, I really would check out some of the Iwo teas that we have um, Iwo teas are not cheap um, but I think that if you start to drink them and you taste like particularly this one, if you just get a sample, I, we have 10 gram samples, um, you'll find that, excuse me, that what you're getting is really, really good. And, you know, I mean, even at, wow, you know, even, uh, as you approach a dollar gram or something like that, um, you know, you're still, let's say you drink session with a couple of people, you do five grams or something like that, or let's say you do the whole 10 grams in a big teapot with three or four people or three people, you know, a really a session with a really great tea where you can drink it, you know, 12, 14 steeps, um, three people for 10, you know, for $10 or something like that, I think is, um, it's, it's not expensive. And what you're getting is in fact, something that is incredibly unique um, and is rare actually. It's not, you know, these are not products that can be mass produced. Um, and, you know, tea from old old trees and from areas like Iwu, um, you know, there you can't just, like I said, you can't just ramp up production, you know, like what they produce is what they produce. So, hmm. Still real strong. 
I know that the steeps I'm doing here are pushing it a little bit, but still, it hasn't, it really hasn't gone down much. Hey, Lucy, what are you doing? It's too warm for Lucy to get on her bed. She's on the floor, a nice, cool wood floor. Where are you going? This is so nice, it just gets better and better. This is one that, again, um, highly recommend that when you brew it that you um, start with short steeps and really kind of try to gradually draw it out. Um, that tends to be my biggest failure when I brew teas is to, especially when I'm making a video because I tend to end up getting distracted. But, um, you know, gradually get that going on and then you can taste you know you can taste more i tend to be able to taste them in the uh, aftertaste a lot of the things when the tea comes on really strong um but yeah anyways i think we're gonna we're gonna call it quits there this tea can keep going 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 um but i would definitely check this one out it's the uh yunnan sourcing 2009 yunnan sourcing autumn bing jia jai We'll link to it just down below there. And uh, it's a really bomber tea. It's really good. Um, not cheap, but I think uh, I think you get something really special when you when you when you get pick up this tea. There are 10 gram samples, 25 gram samples, and then the whole cake. So um, yeah, check it out. If it seems like something you might be interested in. You can pick it up. If if not, um, there's some other Iwu teas that we actually all the Iwu teas that we uh, press. I recommend. Um, and some of those are going to be newer and, and perhaps more accessible in terms of price. But, um, you know, 10 years is 10 years, and this one has uh, aged wonderfully. So check it out and uh, subscribe down below. We're going to have some more videos coming out. Thanks for watching. Bye.